G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin and I'm an American learning to live down under here in beautiful Sydney, Australia. I know this isn't my typical Monday video. Yesterday was Anzac Day. I didn't post yesterday, but I could not stop myself from reacting to this video and posting it today when I saw that the infamous Isaac Butterfield has posted a video of 10 reasons not to visit my home country of America. So as an American, I was curious to see just what his reasons were. He's pretty well known for riling up some controversy and has picked on quite a few Americans in the past. So today I want to see the 10 reasons why he thinks people, or at least Australians, shouldn't visit America. First day that I was here, I saw some very interesting sights. I saw some dude who thought he was the next Biggie Smalls. I saw a naked lady, an entire naked old lady on the beach, complete pancake it was very interesting and I saw a dude on the streets injecting himself with something that I can only describe as probably not insulin. So did he like stop over in Philly? Was he in Kensington? There are huge differences between the country that I'm in right now, America, and where I call home, Australia. And ladies and gentlemen, I've compiled a list for you so you can understand the biggest differences between Australia and America. Really, there are differences between the two countries? I had no idea. It's not like I have a YouTube channel dedicated to that entire point. Number one, tipping. I feel like everybody puts tipping on the list of differences between America and Australia. It's so well known, it's so common. It can be really, really frustrating for people who go abroad to have to learn about the whole tipping system in the US. It's a little complicated. So let's see what he says. Okay, tipping is a massive thing here because American companies pay their employees, I think the technical term in the financial sector is all. Like if you work at a cafe, you might get $5 an hour, so they rely on tips from customers to make a decent livable way. So that is one of the frustrating things about living in America or going over to America is the tipping system. Waiters and waitresses get paid like the pennies on the dollar compared to the average American. It is such a ridiculous system over there that not only do the customers see one price and then have to pay the sales tax on top of that price, but they're then also expected to pay at least 20%, like if you're going to America, base rule 20%, to tip somebody even if their service sucked, even if they took forever, even if they were incredibly rude to you. You still have to tip them like at least 15% bare minimum, it's expected that you tip 20% of your bill every single time. So I wouldn't really say this is a reason not to visit America, it's more just something that you need to be aware of before you go over there. The second big difference is you crazy motherfuckers drive on the wrong side of the road, okay? And I know that they're gonna sit there and say, no, obviously you idiots in Australia drive on the wrong side of the road, but I'm the one with the camera, so suck a big fat Well now, I'm the one with the camera and you guys do drive on the wrong side of the road compared to most other countries in the rest of the world. Australia does drive on the left side of the road, not the right, like right hand side, not right as incorrect side of the road. When you come to America and you realize they drive on the other side of the road, you're stuck with a few things you need to work out. One of them being, I don't know how to cross a road. You look like an idiot. When you go to cross the road, you're looking in the wrong direction. I mentioned this in one of my culture shock videos, like within my first week of getting here, whether it's America or Australia or any other country, if you go somewhere and they drive on the other side of the road than what you're used to, it does take a while just to adjust to having to look the other way. It's second nature to look in a certain direction, so when you have to start looking in the other direction, it does throw you off a little bit for the first couple weeks that you're living in a new country, at least if the country drives on the other side of the road. The third big difference, and this is huge, Americans, I'm sorry, are f***ing rude. And all that, I only went to New York, LA, and Florida. The well, that right there explains it all. It's like when people come to Australia and they go to Sydney and Melbourne and that's it. And yes, I know a lot of people in the comments have said, move outside of Sydney, get outside of Sydney, come down to Melbourne. I know that Australia is more than just the major cities and America is more than just LA and New York. Like typically the rudest people are found in those cities. If you go to smaller cities, if you go to other towns, if you visit some of the larger cities that just aren't New York and LA, a lot of people there are incredibly friendly and helpful to tourists. 
I think people in New York just in general can't quite be bothered when a tourist comes up and asks questions. I remember I was in New York and I was just trying to figure out which way to go down the street. The person purposefully gave me wrong directions and I ended up missing a bus that I needed to get to get home. That can be New York in a nutshell. Yes, there are some very nice, friendly people in New York. I'm certainly not knocking New Yorkers at all or Californians for that matter too. But typically, if you are a tourist and it comes across that way, you can find a lot of rude people in LA and New York. So I feel like this is probably just a personal experience with him. I know a lot of people who've said Americans are very nice, they're friendly, and maybe because they're saying that to an American and they don't want to offend me, I could get that. But still, I don't think that this is a reason not to visit America. Number four is similar to the last one. It's the idea of saying thank you. In New York and LA, we found that people don't know how to act when an Australian says thank you. If I give you something, what do you say? You say thank you and I say, hey, no worries, too easy, all good. In America, do you know what they say when you say thank you for something? They say, uh-huh. I don't know anybody who just does this on a regular basis. Most Americans I know, if you say thank you, typically you're gonna hear no problem or you're welcome. It's just common courtesy. A lot of Americans know this. And I think also because a lot of us have had to work customer service and retail, and some of us were actually brought up with a sense of manners, that you will still find a lot of Americans who do say you're welcome or who will say no problem. Sometimes they say no worries, but that you don't hear that one as much. So again, this is probably just drawing from his personal experience. I wouldn't say this is how most Americans are as somebody who spent 30 years living and growing up in the U.S. But wherever you go, you will always find some rude people. It sounds like he's just had some bad luck with the people he's run into in just L.A. and New York. So if you're liking this video so far, hit the like and subscribe button down below. Join our little Amer Australian family. I post on normally Mondays and sometimes Thursdays about the differences between American and Australian culture and the overall process of learning to live down under. Number five, and this isn't a difference, but this is something you'll notice as an Australian when you get to America, that you go full bogan. So when I stepped foot in America, I went from me talking like me right now, quite, you know, I'm good at enunciating most words and all that type of shit, to within about five minutes, walking up to people going, G'day mate, you wanna know if I can get a little, can I get a lift on that Uber over there, big fella? Like, so obviously he's talking to Australians about this. I can't really comment. It's not like I go over and suddenly start speaking like that. But I've never heard any Aussies say that they like play it up over there, that they exaggerate their accent. This might just be something he's done. If you guys have ever gone over to America or another country and you've caught yourself doing this, let me know down below. But I've never heard any Aussies go like full bogan whenever I talk to them over there. Like I've actually met quite a few Australians over there and it felt pretty toned down. It felt like I'm talking to just the average Aussie person. It didn't feel like I was talking to some exaggerated bogan stereotype. So this one just might be on Isaac. Number six, the food is almost better in America. Now, what I mean by that is the food is bigger. Now I am, you know, I'm not fat, but I'm not skinny. I'm somewhere in the middle, but I'm a fat boy at heart. It is so common for people to comment on the food portions over in America. Yes, they are huge. In fact, we just went to like an American style restaurant for a friend's birthday last week. And just like in America, the portion sizes were huge. I couldn't finish most of my meal. And even in America, when I go over there, it is so common to go to a restaurant and not be able to finish your full plate of food. They almost expect that people aren't going to finish and normally you'll have a doggy bag that you end up taking home from a restaurant. So it is actually pretty common to get two meals out of one meal at a restaurant because you have that and then you bring it home and then you have lunch or something the next day. See, I feel like a lot of people know this one and it's definitely not a reason not to visit America. I mean, who's going to complain about getting more food? Uh, seven, ladies and gentlemen. The alcohol is so cheap. The alcohol over here in Australia is so expensive and the alcohol in America is so cheap. I've pointed this out in a couple of my videos and then of course a couple people comment about reasons why it's more expensive, trying to rationalize why it's more expensive. It is just so cheap in the States. And you have alcohol everywhere. You got it in pharmacies, shopping centers, gas stations, which are petrol stations. You got them everywhere you might need them. 
So that's not entirely true. It depends on the state that you go to over in the states. I don't know California and New York's laws. I've never lived in either of those. Where I was from in Pennsylvania, you couldn't get alcohol at, say, a Target or a Walmart or anything like that for the longest time. And now it's a little bit more common for those big chain stores and some grocery stores to have a small little section attached to the grocery store where they sell beer and wine. I've never seen them sell spirits there. I think it's just like beer, wines, and ciders. If you want spirits, you have to go to a specialty store, a wine and spirit store, as they're typically called over in the States. It's like fine wine and good spirits. But funny thing is when you go to those stores, you actually can't buy beer in those stores. You have to go to a beer distributor separately. So if you need to pick up beer, wine, and alcohol for a party, if you're trying to pick it up in Pennsylvania, you're going to have to go to at least two shops. So this one, it depends on the state that you visit, really what their alcohol laws are. And on top of that, some of them have really weird laws. Some of them, you still can't buy liquor on Sundays in some states. In Kentucky and South Carolina, you can't buy alcohol on election day. And even if you're in a state where you can buy alcohol on Sundays, some of them don't allow alcohol purchases until noon or later. So it's really going to depend on the state that you visit in the states what the alcohol laws are. But remember, that's only if you're 21 or older. I'm surprised he didn't mention the fact that you have to be 21 or older to drink over in the states. If you want to take a gap year between high school and uni, you're probably not going to want to go to the states if you're planning on drinking and partying. A lot of bars are really strict and even if you look like you're over 21, they're still going to card you just to make sure that they're covered because the consequences of serving alcohol to a minor in the States are huge. No business wants to be responsible for that. The fines, the possible loss of liquor license, there's so much to it that American companies generally just won't take the risk and serve minors over there. So even if you look like you're over 21, even by a couple of years, they're still going to card you. Eight, the big difference here is no one understands what Australians are on about. Colloquialisms do not work here. Colloquialism being a term or a phrase that is a local language. In Australia, we have heaps of them. Dry as a dead dingo's donger. That means it's really dry out, right? Makes complete fucking sense. I was in an Uber the other day that nearly got sideswiped by a Porsche, right? It was really, really crazy. It happened really quick. And I said to old mate, oh, spew, and that was bloody close. He looked at me like I just said to him, oi, governor, can I shine your shoes? You're in America, why are we gonna understand Australian colloquialisms? I, that is so, that's a reach. Like, come on, there are some American colloquialisms that I still say that trip my partner up, that trip friends and family up, and they have to ask me what it is I'm talking about. And there are still a lot of Aussie sayings that I'm learning a lot of these colloquialisms that I don't quite get yet. I think most of the everyday ones I do. But going to another country and expecting them to understand your colloquialisms, come on. That's not a reason not to visit America just because we don't understand Aussie slang in general. Before I started dating my partner, I knew next to no slang words. Pretty much everything I learned were from a couple of YouTube videos that I watched before I planned a trip over here back in 2019. So no, most Americans aren't going to know Aussie colloquialisms. And frankly, if you're going to another country, America or any other, you shouldn't expect them to understand your colloquialisms. If they don't understand you, just explain what it means. It's not that hard. Number nine, the big difference is tourism. There's so many great things to see in America. In New York, you could spend months there walking around. And we, we, we did about 20,000 steps every day and we still didn't get to see everything. In Australia, okay, if you come to Australia, you see the Great Barrier Reef, you fly over it there, you've seen it, it's a big fucking coral reef. You go to the Sydney Harbour Bridge, there's a bridge, you know, you've seen bridges before. And you go to Melbourne and see a protest or something. That so clearly this one's a joke. We all know that there is so much to see and do over here in Australia. There are so many historic sites. Nature over here is absolutely incredible. If you are an avid hiker or an avid camper or swimmer or surfer, the list goes on and on. Obviously, we know that there is so much to see over here in Australia. Yes, there might not be some of the larger typical sites, I think partly because there's just more major cities over in the US. Australia only has five major cities with more than a million people living in them. So of course when you're talking about architecture and those kinds of man-made landmarks, there's going to be less to see. 
but that doesn't mean that there isn't a lot to see and visit over here in Australia. I think it really depends on what you're after, what you're looking for. Tourism, I don't think is a reason not to visit America. There is so much to see and there's no possible way you can go over and see it all. But it's like when people plan trips to Australia, it will take months to really be able to fully experience Australia, visit all the states, all the territories, go to the beaches, go to the mountains. There's so much here. So clearly, I think this one was just meant to be a throwaway, a joke. I think personally, as an American, he's really struggling to come up with 10 good reasons not to visit America. But let's see what this last one is. Number 10, and the last big difference is comedy. I learned that in Australia, we are the biggest when it comes to stand-up comedy. Comedians refuse to do jokes that push the boundaries. In I feel like he probably made this entire video just to make this one point about comedy. He is a comedian and there is a little bit of a difference in humor between America and Australia. But funny enough, I see it the other way around. Americans are so uptight with their humor, whereas Aussies tend to be so much more laid back. Aussies can take a joke, Americans get so easily offended by jokes. So seeing somebody say it's the other way around, really interesting perspective because I would have thought it's the complete opposite. Obviously I'm not a comedian, being a comedian isn't part of my job, so knowing all of these nuances is something that I'm just not familiar with, but just as an American it's kind of funny to hear him say that because I would have thought it's the other way around. Personally, I'm somebody who likes raunchy humor, dark humor, I, I love Jimmy Carr, I think Joe Rogan can be funny. Taking the whole podcast thing out, his comedy is pretty good, Bill Burr is hilarious. All these kind of controversial and quasi been cancelled in the last few years comedians are absolutely hilarious. But that's just me, that's my own personal sense of humor, and that's just the kind of humor that I typically enjoy from like quote unquote professional comedians. So of these, I don't think any of these are really reasons not to visit America. There is so much that America has to offer. Overall, I think America is a pretty great country, even though it is very, very flawed in a lot of ways. Like I've said on this channel before, no country is perfect and no government is perfect. And Isaac, if you are going to do that tour later on in the year, visit places that aren't just LA and New York. Visit some of the smaller places, visit some of the smaller towns, visit some of the slightly smaller cities that you don't see in movies everywhere. Help come to my hometown in Philly and see how your show goes there. I kind of want to see how that would turn out. So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like and subscribe button down below to join our little Admire Australian family. I post on Mondays and normally Thursdays, and I guess today's an exception, about the differences between American and Australian culture and the overall process of learning to live down under. My name's Caitlin, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.